Hey guys, it's uh, the Dude to Two, and uh, today I want to do something a little different. Um, I've been reading a book called The Master of Go by Yasunari Kawabata. And this is the book. You can get it on Amazon or um, you know eBay or any of those places. But I bought it uh, brand new to support the you know whenever I buy something go related I try to pay full price uh, if it's not crazy expensive to support the, um, the author or whatever but uh, because of this book uh, it it's kind of changed my outlook on go and um, it brought a lot of uh, crazy historical aspects of the game uh, out into light so I did a little bit of research and I wanted to share uh, what I figured out with you first of all I'm trying uh, out a new webcam and it follows my face. It's supposed to anyway. Maybe it stopped. Ah, oh, there we go. So, um, I don't really have anybody. There we go. Isn't that crazy? So it's kind of freaking me out a little bit. So I apologize for the the weirdness, but I figured I'd try it out and see if I like it or not. And forgive the basement. I'm doing some remodeling around the house. Uh, that out of the way, let's let's get started about this book. Um, it's, uh, it'll be a book review with a little bit of history. It's uh, it's got just under 200 pages, like 185. Uh, it's got a lot of footnotes to explain different um, parts of the game and different things. Um, <clears throat> the story also won a Nobel Prize for literature. And rightly so, it is an amazing book and a very fast read. You could probably read through the whole book maybe around an hour, maybe a little more, but not much more. Um, each chapter is usually two to three, maybe four pages. And um, it's written in very flowery, poetic language. And it really does a good job of um, you know, setting the stage for this match. Uh, the book is about a match between the last Hoimbo, Hoimbo Shusai, and uh, Katani Minog uh, Minoru, I'm sorry, Katani Minoru who uh, is another very famous player. Um, <clears throat> uh, the master throughout the book is Hoembo Shusai. He's referred to as the master. And uh, this is basically his last match um, that he's going to play. And it turns out that the str a lot of people say that the stress of this match is what actually killed him uh, because he died shortly after. Um, he was from, as the book points out, he was from a different time. There were no time limits. Um, there was no Comey, um, meaning uh, meaning he was kind of a little bit different than everybody else. Um, when he would play a game, he would think very deeply. He would uh, he would be deep in thought throughout the whole game, and a lot of times people would lose patience. Um, this game itself, uh, both Katani and uh, Hoimbo uh, decided on 40 hours each to play this game over the course of three months. Uh, the game lasted just under a year uh, due to various reasons explained in the book, uh, mostly having to do with uh, the master's the master's health. Um, <clears throat> but it played an epic game, and um, uh, the book really does a good job of showing it. Um, the book also uh, Hoembo Shusai is uh, the last Hoembo. Is his life is loaded with controversy. Um, many people believe he shouldn't have been Hoembo in the first place. Uh, many people believe he was a scoundrel, and um, actually Go Sagan, uh, famous Go player, called him a scoundrel because he, uh, I believe it was because he sold or he was paid a huge amount of money for this last game. And he took all the money and put it toward his, his large estate, and he didn't give any of it back to the Go community. At least this is what Go Sagan has been um, quoted as saying. Um, now, Hoenbo Shusai also played a game with Go Sagan, and many people uh, say that he abused uh, Go Sagan, taking advantage of uh, the situation. Now, the situation was, at the time, there were only... Um, one, there was only one nine don, and this was Hoembo Shusai, and all the other players were no higher than seven at the time. Um, when he played Go Sagan, Go Sagan was an up and comer, 
and he was of a rank of five, five Don. And uh, the Don system was different back then. Um, you, you had to put in your time. You had to show different. Um, sorry, you had to show different. Uh, levels of uh, knowledge, you had to show character mattered. Nowadays it's just if you win enough matches you, you gain your rank. There's the OTL uh, ranking system, but back then it wasn't like that. Um, other people had to, I mean you had to win, you had to show that you were very strong, but there was more to it than just um, you know being a strong player. Anyway, uh, in the 1933 game he played Go Sagan, and the custom of the time was because the stronger player played white, uh, if ever um, white wanted to delay the game for another day, uh, that was white's option. And uh, a lot of times during a, a long big name game, um, uh, whoever is the stronger players will say, okay, well, let's take a break and we'll continue this another day because you know I'm busy or whatever the reason. So white had the option of uh, putting the game off basically for another day. And um, it showed that uh, during during this match um, with Go Sagan, um, he deliberately put this game off 13 times. Uh, and he ended up... Uh, well, what made this so bad was during a big game, um, they didn't seal the last move. So whenever, um, say, Go Sagan would play a move, instead of think about what crazy, you know, what, what move to use to defend it, he would say, you know what, I'll adjourn it and we'll play the next time. And then he would go home with his students and he would study all the moves. At least this is the charge against him. Whether or not it's true, uh, you know, kind of remains to be seen. But um, in one instance, Go Sagan played a particularly aggressive, really nasty, awesome move. And the Hoembo was obviously a little perturbed. And he thought for a while, and then he adjourned, and then he went home. And when he came back, uh, however long later, he played an amazing move back. And many people say that it was one of his top students that pointed this move out to him during one of the study sessions, and he used it. Um, and there may be some truth to this, uh, you know, depending upon who you talk to, people in favor of him, people not in favor of him. It seems like most people are not in favor of him. But um, the author of this book is obviously painting him in a very positive light, painting him as a person from uh, a, a different time and a different place uh, when Go was more a way of life, less um, uh, a job, I guess. Um, and it, it, there are different examples of this. Um, evidently, the Hoembo Shusei was great at uh, different games like Mahjong and Rango and American chess and uh, Japanese chess called Shogi um, and he would play all these games all the time and when he played these games he put his whole heart and soul into every game that he played to the point where other people didn't want to play him because he couldn't just play a relaxed casual game every one of his games was very intense and he gave his all every time and so um, when he played his uh, his match with um, Kitani, uh, he, uh, you know, sometimes it took uh, an hour and a half to, to decide on just one move. Uh, and Kitani even took more time. But, um, you know, it's kind of a different story. Kitani was very young at the time, and uh, uh, Hoembo was uh, 65, and he was having... Um, problem with his heart, one of his valves wasn't clo clothing, closing. Um, everybody always com commented that he had a very weak body. Uh, he had the body of a child with the head of a, a grown-up, they would say. Um, and he was constantly dealing with medical problems, but when he was at the game, he would sit down and he would, boom, he'd be in, into the game. And, uh, you know, often uh, Katani would make little comments. Um, not rude ones, just little, like, you know, hello, master, how are you? Or it's really raining hard. And uh, the master would very rarely say anything. Um, <clears throat> but uh, it ended up that um, Katani ended up winning by five points. And remember, this was before Comey. So if Comey was added and they played exactly the same way, Oumbo would have won. 
but um, the, the book goes on to chronicle various um, differences in opinion uh, that the master has versus what uh, the modern go has become and it really is a, an excellent introduction to um, how go was as opposed to how it is today and how um, I mean you have there are hundreds of nine dons now from Japan, Korea, China, Taiwan, maybe. Uh, you know, I know there are some nine dons in Taiwan, and um, possibly in other countries now. You know, as as time moves on, there's some very strong players in America, really, really strong players throughout Europe. Um, I don't know about nine dons yet, but um, point of the matter is, at one time, he was the only nine don, and nobody could touch him uh, most of the time. Um, like I said, he beat Gosagan. Uh, a lot of people say it's only because he abused the system, but nonetheless, I mean, nobody doubts Gosagan was, was an absolute master at his art, and uh, he was pretty much, for a time, the only one who could even challenge Huimbo Shusei. And, um, you know, that, that being said about uh, a little bit of the history, um, I want to talk about the author just for a bit. Um, he was evidently a very good friend of both of them, Katani and um, Huimbo Shusei, and Throughout the book, he doesn't say uh, Katani's name, um, Katani Minoru. Uh, he called him uh, a different a different name, probably because uh, at the time Katani was still alive. I'm not entirely sure on any of that, but um, he did refer to Koen Boshusei by name uh, and then called him the master throughout. And um, he ended up uh, killing himself, at least he died from gas poisoning that he turned on. Um, some say it was an accident, uh, which is possible, but a lot of people who knew him said that he wouldn't have killed himself, and a lot of people said he was just heartbroken over um, over everything that happened um, with uh, the changes going on with Japan after the war, etc. But uh, I believe he died in 1971. But um, the author of this book was the newspaper writer. He would write for the newspaper. Uh, something like uh, 80 or 90 different uh, little sections in the newspaper, and he had to write in such a way that people who didn't understand Go could follow the match, and he would talk constantly about what he saw, not so much what was going on in the game, but what uh, <clears throat> what was going on with the people. Uh, how was the master's health today? Uh, and he mentioned, I mean, I learned a lot of stuff about each of the players, like Katani, for instance, uh, was addicted to tea. He would drink gallons of it every day, and he had to constantly go to the bathroom. Sometimes he had to go to the bathroom once an hour throughout a 10-hour, 12-hour session. Uh, and he said when he thinks, he would get nervous, and when he got nervous, he would need tea to calm him down, and when he would drink tea, he would go to the bathroom. And then he'd come back and realize he needs some more tea. Uh, and one time, it, it seemed to have annoyed the master, and the master said, you, you drink too much tea. And he's like, I know. can't help it, you know. But, uh... I highly recommend the book. Highly, highly recommend the book. It's a very fast read. Um, it is... Sorry about this webcam's messing with me. We'll get it moving all around and everything. Um, it was 13 bucks on Amazon. Uh, and uh, if you have the Amazon Prime, it was free shipping. Got it in a day and a half, which is pretty awesome. Um, that's about it. Uh, I just wanted to share my love of this book. Probably going to read it again. It really is uh, poetic and really amazing and uh, I wanted to share a little bit of history um, a lot of us just take for granted that go as a I mean in our American sense of you know you've got a win-win-win and uh, you know the, there's a, a part of this book where the author of the book uh, he was a 13 Q um, and he was on a train and there was an American who had a go board and they got to talking and he said alright well let's play and so he played with this American, and this American played very fast. He didn't think a lot of his moves through. He, he knew a lot of patterns, but he just played. And uh, Kawabata, the writer of this book, beat him over and over and over and over again. And it made him feel bad that he was able to beat this guy, even with a six stone handicap. And it really confused him that the American didn't really seem to care that he lost. And he lost every time, and he didn't care. He just was happy, and uh, and it it just shows that I mean, the way we view go and uh, 
the way they view Go, um, at least at the time, are really different. Uh, this really is something that is important to them. It's not just a game. It's not just a, you know, let, let's pull out the Monopoly board every once in a while. You know, this is uh, something that they take very, very seriously. And it's something we should keep in mind. Uh, I think uh, even in my Go Club, uh, the formalities are uh, a lot of times, except for like a few of us, they're just kind of throw away. You know, people want to eat a sandwich and play or, you know, set their coffee cup on the go board or, or something like It's just a game. It's, it's nothing special to them. But um, if, I think if you want to get to these ranks that these guys get and you want to get really, really good, uh, maybe you need to treat it as something a little more than a game. That's some closing thoughts. Um, up and coming, uh, I ordered uh, some more books from Amazon, some more of those step-up books because they are pretty awesome. And I'm going to do some experimenting with um, live events on YouTube. And I'm thinking maybe I'll do a live event of me studying through those step-up books. Uh, if I could figure out a way to do that, that would be pretty awesome. And uh, if this webcam video comes out good and the sound comes out good and everything seems to be working all right, then maybe I'll find a way to use this webcam and just keep it streaming and we'll see how that goes. But uh, I figure this long enough for a video. I hope I didn't bore you. I know... Uh, I, I'm not, I, I don't usually do history or anything like that. And I see that my bald dome here is just shining and glaring at you. I, that's it. Whoa, that's even worse. Let me get back up here. So, um, <clears throat> just uh, hopefully give you guys some food for thought and uh, I'll be messing around with live events. Hopefully I can get, a, get it up and running and get some of you guys here watching. Uh, that's about it. If you have any suggestions, comments, criticisms. Uh, you guys haven't been hesitating on any of those, so let's keep them coming. Appreciate it. All right, guys. Take it easy. I'll see you later.